Welcome to the world of material science. My name is Professor Bonnet. In this video we will be learning how corrosion is defined and by which technical terms the corrosion process is described according to the standards. In addition we will be learning to distinguish the main forms of corrosion. Corrosion is a process that, that causes damage to materials often to the point of failure of a technical product. Everyone can observe corrosion in everyday life. Rust on cars, bicycles, garden fences and homes, creeping destruction of road structures, bridges, buildings, leaks in water pipes, failure of plastic components due to aging, cracks or erosion. EN ISO 8044 defines corrosion as a physiochemical interaction between a material and its environment that results in changes in the properties of the material and that may lead to significant impairment of the function of the material, the environment or the technical system of which these form a part. In most cases this reaction is electrochemical in nature but in some cases it can be chemical or non-electrochemical or physical. Corrosion does not necessarily mean destruction. For example, a railroad rail may rust at a certain corrosion rate for years without affecting its ability to function within its expected service life. According to EN ISO 8044, fundamental distinctions are made between the terms corrosion system, corrosion effect and corrosion damage. Whereas the norm defines a corrosion system as a system that consists of one or more materials and those parts of the environment that influence corrosion. Corrosion effect refers to change in any part of the corrosion system caused by corrosion. Corrosion damage is defined as a corrosion effect that causes impairment of the function of the material, the environment or the technical system of which these form a part. However, corrosion resistance is not just a material property but depends on a variety of factors. We actually always have to look at the corrosion system. Here we first have the material. The condition is not only described by the chemical composi composition alone, but furthermore also by the processing, such as rolling, forging, casting, etc. Further processing, such as welding, any heat treatment that might have been applied or even the combination with other materials. The medium is characterized by temperature, pH value, conductivity, flow velocity and oxygen content. Only when the sum of this information is known can we make definitive statements about whether or not a reaction and the associated corrosion will occur and what corrosion rate, if any, is to be expected. Corrosion is divided into three broad classes according to the cause of corrosion. Chemical, electrochemical and physical corrosion. First of all, let us discuss chemical corrosion. Here the corrosion in hot gases is to be mentioned above all. The chemical reaction that usually causes the corrosion damage here is strong oxidation. This photo shows a boiler that has been operated at too high temperatures and has scaled accordingly due to strong oxidation. The second major class is that of electrochemical corrosion, always where the corrosion has been initiated by the presence of an electrolyte. A typical example is intergranular corrosion, EGC, also known as intergranular attack, EGA. This picture sh shows a strainer made of a nickel-based alloy, as commonly used in filter systems in the chemical industry. It consists of fabrics of different fineness which are processed on textile machines. In order to create a bond between the fabrics, they were sintered at approximately 1000 degrees Celsius. At these temperatures, there is increased precipitation of chromium and tungsten carbides at the grain boundaries. If we carry out a corrosion test with such a manufactured strainer, with a 24-hour load in concentrated sulfuric acid, the damage shown on the right occurs. The fine meshes have all 
ready completely disappeared and the coarse mesh parts show severe intergranular corrosion. If one considers that such strainers have unit prices of 50,000 to 100,000 euro, one can imagine the damage in the chemical industry when these strainers have to be replaced after only a few months of use. The only remedy is diffusion annealing at approximately 1,150 degrees Celsius, which dissolves the carbon again. The third corrosion class is physical corrosion. Here, exclusively physical phenomena and not chemical reactions play a decisive role. A typical example is hydrogen embrittlement of high-strength steel, also known as hydrogen-assisted cracking or hydrogen-induced cracking. This photo shows a reaction through an embrittled screw that was actually made of a ductile material. If atomic hydrogen can form in the medium, it tends to diffuse into the metallic material. There, it recombines to form hydrogen molecules again and thus leads to crack formation at grain boundaries due to strong internal stresses. First of all, we will look at a brief overview of all possible forms of chemical and electrochemical corrosion and then go into some of them, uh, the main types of corrosion in more detail later. In addition to chemical, electrochemical and physical corrosion, the corrosion system can be further subdivided into those that lead to corrosion under mechanical stress and those in which corrosion damage can occur, occur even without mechanical stress. Chemical co corrosion without mechanical stress is the after forementioned corrosion in hot gases. Other types of corrosion that also lead to oxidation are catastrophic scaling, which is a more severe form of corrosion in hot gases, and internal corrosion, in which oxidation does not occur on the surface of the material but rather inside it. The electrochemical forms of corrosion without mechanical stress include uniform corrosion, pitting corrosion, crevice corrosion, galvanic corrosion, selectic corrosion, condensate corrosion and microbiologically induced corrosion. As chemical corrosion under mechanical stress, mainly fretting corrosion is to be mentioned. In the case of fretting corrosion, it is mainly the surface particles that are removed by mechanical wear due to friction that are corroded. Electrochemical corrosion with mechanical stress includes stress corrosion cracking, vibration corrosion cracking, strain-induced corrosion cracking, erosion corrosion and cavitation corrosion. As already mentioned, chemical corrosion is the reaction of iron in an oxygen-containing atmosphere at high temperatures. However, the temperature must be very high, namely greater than 570 degrees Celsius, which is not necessarily a rarity in plants of the chemical industry. The main reaction is then 2Fe plus O2 react to 2FeO. The compound FeO is formed, which is called Wüstite. Let's take a look at how an unalloyed constructional steel, which was aged for 72 hours at 650 degrees Celsius, would react with ox oxygen. In addition to the primary Wüstite layer, this one here, FeO, Further reaction to magnetite Fe3O4 and finally to hematite Fe2O3 takes place. In electrochemical corrosion reactions, we distinguish between oxygen corrosion and acid corrosion. Oxygen corrosion involves the reaction of iron in water containing oxygen. In the oxidation reaction, iron dissolves and releases electrons. These are converted to hydroxide ions 
in the reduction reaction of oxygen and water. If you write down the reactions, then we have the oxidation as 2Fe reacts to 2Fe2+, plus, plus 4E-. Minus. The reduction is O2 plus 2H2O plus those 4E- minus react to 4 OH minus, so that the overall redox would look like 2 Fe plus O2 plus 2 H2O reacts to 2 Fe 2 plus plus 4 OH minus. The most effective way to prevent this type of corrosion is therefore to remove the oxygen from the system. This can be achieved, for example, by adding oxygen binding agents. Here, sulfides, SO3-2- and levoxine, N2H4, are primarily used. In acid corrosion, as the name suggests, there is a reaction of the iron with the H plus ions of an acidic medium. Yeah. In this case, the electrons released by the iron in the solution during dissolving are used by the H plus ions to form hydrogen molecules. So we can write down the equations as oxidation is Fe reacts again to Fe2 plus plus 2E minus. But then the reduction reads as 2H plus plus 2E minus reacts to H2 gaseous. So that the overall redox would look like Fe plus 2H plus reacts to Fe. 2 plus plus H2 gaseous. As we can imagine, acid corrosion can also quickly lead to additional hydrogen embrittlement. So much so far on the subject of corrosion. Thank you for watching. But join me again for the next video when we will learn more about the various types of electrochemical corrosion.